Looking at the number of starting quarterbacks the Commanders have run through since 2018, they top the list in all the league with 12. You got names like Taylor Heineke, you have Alex Smith, Dwayne Haskins, Case Keenum, and now Carson Wentz added to that list. Now, Commanders head coach Ron Rivera, he joined our Jonathan Jones for all of the latest at the NFL Combine. Jonathan Jones alongside Washington Commanders head coach Ron Rivera. Ron, thanks so much for joining me here. I appreciate it, Jonathan. Good to be here. Yeah, so, hey, Sam Howell, QB1 going into the offseason. Uh, you know, I don't think that you are anointing him uh, just yet or anything, mm -hmm. but it's clear, especially with the move you guys just made with um, releasing Carson Wentz, that he is going to, to be the guy. Uh, why so much faith in young Sam Howell? Well, I think part of it has a lot to do with just the fact that, you know, we studied him when he was coming out as a junior. And so when the opportunity came for us to draft him, we did. And we did a lot of research prior to the draft. It just so happened he was available in the fifth round. Uh, we, you know, when we took care of all of our other needs, it, it, we figured, you know what, let's take a shot. And he hasn't disappointed. He's done exactly what we thought he was. We, he throws the ball the way we think he's capable of. And so going into this season, we need to find out. And the only way to do it is by giving him the opportunity. And just tell him, it's yours if you earn it. And that's the most important thing. He's got to earn this. Once the story came out at the beginning of January that he was going to be QB1 going into the offseason, I think one of the things I heard the most from folks about it was if the commanders feel so good about Sam Howell right now after one game, why didn't they feel good enough to put him in there before that one game? I think a lot of it had to do with just the learning curve, making sure everything was in place. Secondly, it was about what we were trying to do with the veteran guys. Taylor got us into a great position. Um, and then, you know, we got into a game where we, we thought coming out of uh, San Francisco, I made a change, and unfortunately it didn't work out. And so we had the opportunity to play him. We played him in the Dallas game, and he showed us some things. He really did. And I think uh, a lot of that is just you wait for an opportunity to see the guy exposed to, to the real deal situation, and we never got to that point. The last game of the year was our opportunity, and we found it, and I feel comfortable going forward. You guys got a big coup here with the offensive coordinator, getting yes. Eric Bieniemy, most successful offensive coordinator in Kansas City Chiefs history, two-time Super Bowl champion. What is he going to bring to the commanders? What is this offense going to look like under him? Well, the biggest thing is, you know, as, as I was made the change, my biggest thought was, okay, I wanted to see about a little bit of what they were doing. I, I started watching tape on them, and then when the game started to play out, I started watching those things, and I kept thinking, God, we got five guys on offense, five playmakers that we can do those things. You know, we feel good about who our receiving core is. We like our tight end position, and we got some dynamic backs. Now, let's see about if we can get them into the ball into their hands a lot quicker, uh, a little sooner in terms of the style of offense they were playing in Kansas City. I think there's been a little bit of a misnomer, Ron, about whether this offense is going to be run first or run yes. heavier. Yes. Explain what this offense is supposed to look like as it relates to the run. Well, the biggest thing more than anything else is, you know, you want balance on the offense side. You know, you want to be able to run the ball successfully, and if you are, continue to do that. If you're not, maybe you have to go some play action. You may have to go some drop back. But, or you come out throwing it, it sets up the run. Great. But what we want to do is we want to use the skill sets of our playmakers and we want to put the balls in their hand. Okay? And what you want to do is you want to score – as much as you can going into the fourth quarter, and you got that lead, now you become that two-to-one. Now you grind it out. You go into your four-minute offense a little bit early, you know, you grind it down, you score again, and you pretty much seal the game. That's what we're looking for. I mean, again, the misnomer being is, yeah, do you want to be two-to-one? Yes, but you got to be balanced to be able to score points. Get in that fourth quarter, now you grind it. Now you take, you, you know, you take, the, you, you take their, their will away from them by running the ball when you know they know you have to. Do analytics back that up, or is that that old-school football mentality? It's a little bit of the old-school mentality, but it's also analytics. I mean, you go back and look at the numbers, and they're going to tell you, oh, well, teams are balanced until they get to the fourth quarter, and if they got a lead, now they run it, and that's where you see those two-to-ones a little bit more so than anything else. Deron Payne, you all mm -hmm. officially placed the franchise yes. tag on him. Is that a sign of where things are in the contract negotiations? No. What, what, what that is is – you know, just hey, we're doing it obviously. You know, for for, for, for the for the right to deal with him directly. Um, and again, he's a guy that we we we've targeted. He's a guy that's been part of what we've done, part of what we've built. Uh, we understand he had he had a tremendous breakout year, and, and it's one of those things that we're aware of, and we're looking to you know get a deal done. We did it with the intent of working through it with his agent. Uh, his agent's been great with us. You know, Joel's done a tremendous job for him. 
and uh, you know he's been very fair with us so far, and we just want to continue that that path. What's the future with Chase Young? I think you guys still yes. have a couple of months before yes. you have to make the decision on his option. Right, and we, we want to make sure we, we, we look at everything as far as he's concerned, and he's been great for us. He really has, and you know, unfortunately, coming off of the knee injury and 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 you know, and not getting back till the end of the year, uh, we saw those flashes. But we want to see where he is. You know, we have a couple of months, so there's no hurry, and, and we've got to go through some other things that, some, with some of our other guys. When I consider, you know, another long season, right, 17 games mm -hmm. and all that, you guys were fairly late getting your coaching staff together, yes. right, because of the, the changes. Have you been able to dive into this draft, yes. like, in, in years past? Like, what's that been like? It has, you know, because what I've tried to do is kind of manage my time. You know, we, 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 we did a long process in terms of the interviews, but between those, you know, I was – I had gotten my list already for the draft, started working on specific positions that we feel are of need. And, um, you know, I've, I've, I've gone through those, uh, and I've still got probably two-thirds left to go, uh, which is about normal for now. So I feel like I'm in a good spot. But then coming here and being at the Combine, probably one of the most important things we will do is we'll sit down and we'll do the interviews. And as you go through the interview process, it will confirm some things. It will bring up some more questions that you do feel you gotta get you got to get taken care of. What do you think about the – offensive line depth and the linebacker at middle linebacker depth when I'm talking when you're talking about positions that yep. you may be focusing on am I sort of keying in on a couple that you guys may well be there at? there are a couple of positions that we most certainly do think about you know our linebacking position is 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 one that because defenses are evolving so much you really only truly play two inside guys and that third guy has to be an athletic guy we've used a safety mm -hmm. in the last few years uh, when I was in Carolina, it was trending that way. We just happened to have a heck of a guy doing it for us in, 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 in Shaq. Yeah. So now, do you look for that kind of guy or do you continue with the safety mode? So those are some of the things that we're most certainly contemplating as we go through this draft in terms of preparation for draft day. You talk about the interviews and how important it is to sit mm -hmm. down with these guys, right? More and more, a lot of head coaches in the NFL are not coming out to the mm -hmm. combine and are opting to stay back and let whomever handle this stuff for them. Why are you not in that camp? Because I really do believe in the interview process. Um, part of it, too, is I've got some competition committee uh, responsibilities I've got to do, and we do it here in person. So that's also part of it. So that's why I'm here. But I do, I really do think interviews are important. I really do think seeing these guys, uh, listening to them, seeing their response, their reaction to, to things. Um, you could do it on Zoom, but you don't really see the body language. You don't really feel it. Um, and with the way we do things, you know, we, 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 we do things a little bit different, so we want to be able to interact with the, with, the, with the candidate a little bit more as well. You mentioned competition committee, plenty that's being mm -hmm. discussed, the hip drop tackle, yep. uh, potentially roughing the passer being reviewable. Uh, what are your thoughts? Where do you stand right now on everything that's being discussed? Well, the big thing is that this is exactly where we are, Jonathan. We're discussing everything, and we're setting it up for our next set of meetings. Uh, we met with the, uh, with the, with the uh, general managers committee and the, uh, and the coaching subcommittee, and we talked about all those things today, and it was a great discussion. I mean, it's so much so that I was a little late getting here because we were really diving into it, and we'll continue to dive into it and prepare everything for when we get to uh, Arizona uh, with the owners' meetings when we have all 32 teams there represented so we have those discussions. What do you feel strongest about? The hip drop. I mean, that's something we need to – because of the injuries. So we really need to take a long look at that. Um, there are some similarities to the horse collar, so that's something that has to be dove into. I gotta say, it's a little surprising to hear an old defensive player talk about the hip drop tackle because I think a lot of folks say, "Hey, he's he's wrapping him up." Yeah, it's unfortunate what happens to a Tony Pollard, of course. But yeah. what are defenders supposed to do? Don't don't you want to make it a, a little tougher on the offense sometimes? I do, but at the same time, I don't want to lose guys and not have them available. I mean, this is a very dynamic game, and with the way you know the salary cap is and how strict that is, the way the rules are, and bringing guys on and off of off of injury. Uh, off, off of IR, you have to be really, really cognizant and aware of that and make good decisions. Well, we also have to be aware of if there's something that we can do to keep guys from missing time, let's do it. So what is a defender supposed to do? Square them up a little bit more. Um, try to try to, try to to drive a little bit more instead of dropping to the hip and rolling. It's a little bit of that roll tackle that, that that's, yeah, that's a little concerning. Were you, uh, were you any good at that kind of tackling? Um, no, nah, because back in the day, you know, we weren't as necessarily aware of using the front part of your body. Yeah. Wow. Ron Rivera, head coach, Washington Commanders. Thanks so much. Thanks, Jonathan.
You can catch all the Combine coverage right here on CBS Sports HQ. We have you covered from in-depth interviews, analysis, all the latest on prospect performances, medical exams, and more. CBS Sports HQ, your home for the NFL Combine. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.